Hey, you guys, what's up? How's it going? I'm just trying out new things with the mic. I took out my, I took off my wind guard because I was thinking that the sound was sounding a little muffled and maybe this was unnecessary. So you can let me know. You can let me know what you think. Is this, is this silver distracting? Do we need like a, some sort of filter over here? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a sound bitch. Hey, you guys, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Chanel and we watch movies and then we talk about them. I am an actor. Ugh, I've been really struggling with can I call myself an actor these days because I can't remember the last time I acted, maybe March 2020, but I'm an entertainer at the very least. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Chanel. We watch movies and I just let you know what's going on in my head as I'm watching them. And I like to point out what I see in the movies, be it a cool acting choice, a cool directing choice, a cool shot choice, cool music, whatever. I really like the movies. I'm always, always, always first and foremost a fan. So that is the way I like to watch movies. Today's movie has been a long time coming. It is a movie that has been recommended to me ever since I saw Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan in You've Got Mail. And then people were like, you have to try Joe versus the Volcano. So that is today's movie, Joe versus the Volcano. I have had a lot of people very invested in me liking or not liking this movie. So everyone is telling me to control my expectations. And you know what? You didn't even have to tell me to because I popped this little baby into IMDb, my favorite and I see that it is written and directed by John Patrick Shanley. He writes absolutely stunning stage plays. And additionally, I know he did Moonstruck. He is the writer and I'm ready for Joe versus the volcano. I'm ready for it to get weird. I think it's going to be a little weird. Going off what I know about John Patrick Shanley, love that name too. I think this is going to be corny. I think that I'm just going to have to saddle up for a fun time and not get bogged down in the realism and I think that I may have enjoyed Moonstruck a little bit more if I was able to get there with Moonstruck now I'm cutting myself slack I saw Moonstruck when I was like 18 before I like was really into the movies so yeah <laughs> that was a huge monologue for me just to say never fear I will be managing my expectations if you want my full link to this definitely hit the link in the description box below thank you so much for joining me here today and on that note let's get right into today's watch which is joe versus the volcano from 1990. it sounds like moonstruck amblin that's a spielberg time time spielberg company <laughs> time that's what i'm there's a guy This is going to be whimsical. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, so little. Some people say a man is made out of mud. What do you get? Another day older. Hmm. Because I can go. I owe my soul to the company though. I'm getting the neorealism of the bicycle thieves Shovel and I walk to the rectal probe 50 years of petroleum jelly this feels like the bleakness of the bicycle thieves that italian neorealist film where everyone's like lining up to get a job in the beginning and it's just like it's like depressing and really bleak yeah hanks is just one of one of the bodies they're not taking any pains to make him unique separate Oh, he's so into the music. <laughs> Missed it. How do you report your customer satisfaction with a rectal probe? Are you like, felt great? Written and directed by John Patrick oh, Shanley. But can he do the job? I'm not arguing that with you, Harry. Harry, Meg. Harry. Yeah, Harry, but can he do the job? I know. Yeah, Harry. I know he can get the job, but can he do the job? The guy on the phone is triggering me. 
I am not arguing that with you. Oh my god, I would snap. I am not arguing that with you. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Much better. So the soft light. How you doing? Feel kind of tired. Yeah. Is that Meg? Ryan? Wow. Is it? Oh no, I don't like feeling stupid. I don't like being wrong, can you tell? You're always going to the doctor. I don't feel None good. Of your so what? goddamn business. You think I feel good? Nobody feels good. After childhood, it's a fact of life. I feel rotten. So what? Fluorescents uh, affect me. They make me feel blotchy. Puffy, I thought this light would. Get rid of the light. No, oh my god. Did you see Hanks' reaction there? Hanks as an actor, he just, he assigned that lamp like life or death status for that reaction. He was like, no. Did you like that? I will. Do it now. Also, does the lamp have the volcano on it? Like, or the, the scene from the volcano scene? Mr. Banks, Dr. Ellison will see you now. I'm in. I feel uneasy. The doctor's office, the bleak lighting, the bleak opening. You have a brain cloud. Brain cloud? There's a black fog of tissue running right down the center of your brain. And it's incurable. I'm not sick except for this terminal disease. Which has no symptoms. I don't have any savings. A few hundred bucks. I spent everything I had on doctors. So I feel like we got like the message of the movie stated very clearly for us. It's like... He is an incurable disease that has no symptoms aside from the ones that he's giving himself because he's a hypochondriac. So it's going to be about a mindset shift, which I love. I think this is quirky and fun. Hmm. This is the first time I'm asking myself, what time period are we in? Because look at this car. Maybe it's the 50s. A lovely little long take as we... Pull back and make him feel really tiny and alone. You were wrong. Quit, Hanks. He Quit. was wrong. Hello? Nothing happened. A lot of bathroom euphemisms in this place. The main drain. And Crusoe. You blew this job. Romeo and Juliet, the Odyssey. You blew this job! But I know, it's fear, yellow freaking fear. I've been too chicken shit afraid to live my life, so I sold it to you for 300 freaking dollars. Oh, wait! You are lucky I don't kill you! You're lucky I don't rip your freaking throat out! But I'm not going to! I loved that monologue. Wow, I would love to see that done. Dee Dee. Yeah. How about dinner tonight? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. If you're a male actor, I would source out of that monologue and go do it somewhere. Go do it for a college audition. A change. It feels nice and obscure. Who am I? That's the real question. Also, they had to de-leading lady Meg Ryan. How do you do that? Give her brown hair and brown eyes. Duh. And a fun accent. You never feel great. No, I never do. <gasps> wow, powerful. A bad job can suck the life right out of you. Comment below if you've been there. Comment below if your ailments mysteriously disappeared when you quit a bad job. A soul-sucking job. What'd you do? I bribed them to sing us a song that would drive us insane and make our hearts swell and burst. What song is it gonna be? Tu calle estoy. Fire in paradise. Do you guys see the volcano symbolism on the side of the bar? Not there by accident. Thank you very much. I don't know why I think it's so cute. It's the music giving me a little bit of 
glistening behind the eyes. Okay, just five or six months to live. She's like, okay, buddy. Right. You may quit, but I got the job in the morning. Dee, I really want you to stay. I forgot my bag. An evergreen punchline. I forgot my bag. This is like the whimsy and heightened reality of a musical for me. So tonally, I'm loving this world. I have On the Street Where You Live stuck in my head because that's what that Spanish song reminded me of. Mr. Joe Banks? Yeah? Have I come at a bad time? Fairy Godmother? Yeah. That was heroic. Come on now, you're a hero! <laughs> Well, that was a long time ago. Yes, it was. How do you know my... Why is this like It's a Wonderful Life, too? I want to hire you to jump into a volcano. You know... He's like, what's that now? I do have what's that? A man's got to jump into the volcano. None of the Waponis are anxious to volunteer for the honor of jumping into the big one. These are yours, if you take the job. It'll be uh, 20 days from today before you'd have to actually jump into the volcano. Oh. And then you jump into the volcano. What do you say? I would do it. I would totally do it. Great job. Great, great writing. Great screenplay. I would do it. They've t they've conveniently taken away Hank's having any of Joe having any of his own money, so he needs money to live his life up for the next month. Uh, I thought I might do some shopping today. All right. Where would you like to go shopping? I don't know. Barney's. All right. Fifth half. Well, where would you go shopping? What for? What do you need? Clothes. Just hire me to drive the car, sir. I'm not here to tell you who you are. I didn't ask you to tell me who I am. You're hinting around about clothes. That happens to be a very important topic to me, sir. Clothes. Mr. Banks. Banks. Clothes makes demand. I believe that. You say to me you want to go shopping, want to buy clothes, but you don't know what kind. It's taken me all my life to find out who I am, and I am tired now. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, so far, why isn't this required viewing? This has a, an amazing message. Well, I got the kind of clothes I'm wearing. So you got no clothes. Yay. I hope it's a makeover montage. I feel like I'm getting married. I feel like I'm giving you away. <laughs> Hi. Give me Cassie Cimarelli, please. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Okay. So there's a car phone. So I think John Patrick Shanley has made the decision to mash up time periods on purpose to give this movie just a completely timeless slash Slash dated feel at the same time. It's like it takes place in the past. I believe I have just the thing. On wheels. It's the holy grail of luggage. Hi. Hi. Are you Joe Banks? Yeah. Who are you? Angelica Granamore. Daddy told me to tell you that I don't know what he hired you for and not to tell me that I'm totally untrustworthy. I'm a Fliberty Gibbet. I'm a Fliberty Gibbet. And follow me. I think that's Meg Ryan. I've never been to LA before. You're kidding me. What do you think? You're kidding me. But it's a great town. Huh. What am I getting when they have Meg Ryan playing all these kooky women in his life? Almost like she's a figment of his imagination. I was an advertising librarian for a medical supply company. Oh, I have no response to <laughs> What do you do? Where do you get your ideas? You have to understand something about art. It comes from someplace. Wow. It, it's like 
It's like looking down on the stars. I love that. Long ago, the delicate tangles of his hair covered the emptiness of my hands. Would you like to hear it again? Okay. <laughs> you see, you know what you're scared of doing. Why don't you do it? See what happens. License plate says, good girl. I'm supposed to get you to the boat by 10, but I could meet you for breakfast. Okay. I told you I was a flibber to gibbet. I love it. It's like absurd dialogue too. She's she's speaking in like messages and adages and I like it. I bet Patricia knows. Who's Patricia? She's my half sister. She's the one who's sailing you wherever you're going. She is? I think we know who Patricia's gonna be. Oh yay. Your half sister? Yeah. Meg looks like Meg. My name is Joseph or Joe. All right, Joe. Get ready, we're leaving. I'm so happy to see Meg being Meg. She's so classic. Wow, there's nothing Meg Ryan can't do. And it only took me my whole life to figure it out. I might have kept that. Just for the UV rays, you know? We eat well aboard the Tweedledee. The Tweedledee? The Tweedledee. All I know about Waponi Woo is that the name means the little island with a big volcano, and then the people, the Waponis, like orange soda. They like orange soda? Yeah. Thus was born the Waponi culture, a mixture of Polynesian, Celtic, Hebrew, and Latin influence. Feel your love of orange soda and no sense of direction. <laughs> Boys like to sleep in the hall. Dagmar sleeps on deck when the weather's good. So you pretty much have things to yourself. I'm in the little stateroom. Great. Did you sleep with my, with my sister? Dead. I was going to say, I still want Hanks and Meg Ryan to get together in this. I always want that. Can you tell me I see Amanda Plummer. Oh, you do not eat those. Oh, so fun. I'm just picturing being on set. <laughs> oh, that's the John Patrick, John Patrick Shanley Moon. JPS. Why do you think I want this boat? All I want to do is sail away. Huh, where would you go? Away from the things of man. Do you believe in God? I believe in myself. I have no interest in myself. I start thinking about myself, I get bored out of my mind. <laughs> my father says that almost the whole world is asleep. Everybody you know, everybody you see, everybody you talk to. I have less than six months to live. The Waponis believe they need a human sacrifice or their island is going to sink into the ocean. They have this mineral your father wants, so he hired me to leap into their volcano. What? You're not going to make me say that again, are you? No. Well, I don't know what to say. You tell me you're dying. You tell me you're jumping into a volcano. My mind is a blank. Oh, I can understand that. I love Meg Ryan. Yes, 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 yes. What I'm always here for. Oh my God, Patrish. And there goes the symbol representing Patricia's future. Sunk. Done. Oh, wow. I couldn't imagine pulling myself on top of that. I'd be in the water forever. And he chucked his hat. What did I tell you? Nothing can get you down when you're already gonna die. <laughs> Mini golf. Those trunks really got everything. How are they getting these shots? I cover 
the they float in this thing in a tank, I guess. I cover the water. This is Hanks's audition for Castaway. <laughs> right? <laughs> John Patrick Shanley loves moon symbolism. Whoa. <laughs> I forgot how big. Thank you. Thank you for knowing. It's about gratitude, my friends. Gratitude. Joe. Are we wake up on, waking up on a raft or are we waking up in his Joe. room in New York City? Didn't you drink any water for yourself, Joe? The raft. That's for you. I still have my trunks. <laughs> the orange soda. <laughs> oh God. How are they importing orange soda? United States Postal Service? Maybe. <laughs> Ooh, don't like that. Don't like that at all. I hope that octopus is already dead. Winged, and I also the word in all the This guy reminds me of Nathan Lane. We're like straight up on Ewok Island. No. She's getting angrier. Come on, people. Maybe I think Hanks, Joe, and Patricia jump in together. That's fun. Is there any ceremony or anything? No, you just jump in. No, you just jump in. I've never loved anybody. I don't know how it happened. I never even slept with him or anything. And now you're going to kill yourself. Can you give us a minute? <laughs> I love you. I love you too. I've never been in love with anybody before either. It's great. I am glad. <laughs> but the timing stinks. I gotta go. Marry me. What? She's in a wedding dress. Chief, and he's in Chief, a tux. Can you come up here, please? <laughs> what the hell are you? You're married. <laughs> yes, thank you. Shotgun wedding. Been a long time coming here to meet you. A long time. Crooked road. The first time I saw you, felt like I'd seen you before. He said that about Dee Dee. It's Romeo and Juliet now. Kano's like, you fucking idiot. I'm all good. Stop sacrificing people to me. It's like God. It's like, stop killing people in my name. I'm fine. It blew us out. We jumped in and it blew us out. <laughs> well, I say, at least it's a miracle. There goes my pony woo. Their life, their life raft. Life gives you what you need if you just get out of your own damn way. I feel changed. Isn't this romantic? Who gets a honeymoon like this? Hey, yeah. I have a brain cloud. A brain cloud. Dr. Ellison? Yeah. That's my father's doctor. He is? Dr. Ellison doesn't have any other patients. My father owns Dr. Ellison. I don't have a brain cloud. Brain cloud, a brain cloud. You think they could think of something better than a brain cloud? <laughs> Your whole life is ahead of you. Well, yeah, I suppose it is. I mean, it's great. Yeah, that's, that's good. I'm relieved. That's great. I'm saved. <laughs> now, well, what, what, what is it now? We're on a raft. There's no land in sight. I don't know. It's always going to be something with you, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. I wonder where we'll end up. 
hell away from the things of man. Away from the things of man. Away from the things of man. They lived happily ever after. I have so many goosebumps. I feel different. Okay, you guys. Joe versus the volcano. I loved that movie. And I'm so relieved. Thank God. I am so happy. Wow. I get it. I get it. I get it. I feel really different after watching that. I really do. I feel changed. I loved that. That was so, so, so much fun. Straight up whimsy, straight up storybook. It starts with once upon a time. I mean, come on. And it ends with, and they lived happily ever after. I guess like, I knew it was going to be a movie about a perspective shift. The brain cloud is just the things holding you back. A depression, um, a grayness, a season of sadness. And it's like about reframing and taking control of your life and acting like you know, each day's your last you know so very timeless message i'm obsessed i'm trying to see what i wrote down i wrote meg is brilliant meg ryan is absolutely astonishingly brilliant in this role she's brilliant in everything she does but holy crap she's so good in this i love how it was her as all three of the women she's so great at that and then he ends up with her in the end it was always her i also feel like if you really want to read into this it's like a, a it could be making a statement on like, what are we doing here? God, what's the meaning of life? Existentialism. And I love that the volcano spits them back out. The volcano's like, I'm good. Stop. I'm all set. They get to just like live their lives happily ever after. And once you get the news like that you're gonna die, everything else is just, everything else is a party. And then I was trying to draw a parallel between the books he pulled out in his office and how the movie went. And I feel like this was the Odyssey and with the journey. And then this was Romeo and Juliet. They sacrificed themselves together to be together forever. Um, I forget. I think he pulls out a third book, but maybe we'll see that in the trivia section. So, okay. So let's move on to the trivia. When Joe and Angelica are overlooking Los Angeles and her convertible, that license plate reads bad girl with two A's. And when she's dropping him back at the hotel in the next scene, the front plate reads good girl. Didn't clock the bad girl, clocked the good girl. The lamp that Joe brings into the office displays the future events in the movie, including the yacht, a volcano, and a large full moon. Yes, I think we said that. The books that Joe uses to show Mr. Waturi describe the plot of the film, Romeo and Juliet, Robinson Crusoe, and the Odyssey. I have no experience with Robinson Crusoe. I don't know what that is. When Joe and Dee Dee leave the restaurant, there's a billboard on the left with a picture of an erupting volcano and the words fire in paradise. We also saw that because we're some smart watchers. I s did I say it or did I say it? Oh my God, I'm so proud of myself. The Mexican, the song the Mexican restaurant band plays is the Spanish version of On the Street Where You Live. I said that. I was going to say it is On the Street Where You Live. Instead, I think I said that song reminds me of On the Street Where You Live. But the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. Something like that. <laughs> I have often walked. Writer John Patrick Shanley, Shanley's, oh, I can't say Shanley. I have like an, a lisping problem. John Patrick Shanley's trademark, Full Moon. We know, because we're smart again. Only major issue executive producer Steven Spielberg took with the production was the long, unbroken take of Joe leaving Dr. Ellison's office building. The issue was that John Patrick Shanley did not shoot any coverage of the scene besides the one shot. Spielberg sent Shanley back to the location to film additional angles, which were promptly discarded in favor of the one shot take. Yeah, I understand the fear of not having extra coverage. I'd be afraid. I mean, good on Spielberg for getting it, but nope. We don't need it. The shot of Joe and Dee Dee on the ferry, we wanted to know this, against a surreal multicolored Manhattan skyline, was shot on a smoke-filled soundstage. The moonlit water is actually made of black plastic garbage bags with fans blowing on them, and the skyline is a simple backdrop. Cool. Wow, I would never have thought they were bags. At the end, Joe refers to the crooked road he traveled. A crooked road. There's that crooked sidewalk to the factory, drove the crooked road from the airport, then walked the final crooked path to the top of the volcano, all of which were in the same lightning bolt shape. That shape is also on the wall of Joe's apartment. We need, I need more. I need way more than that. That's not enough. Oh my God. What is this on RogerEber.com? How we chose our favorite film and why mine is Joe versus the volcano from March 16th, 2020. Written by Colin Souter. 
Do you know your all-time favorite film? Does the answer come to you as easily as your social security number? It's okay if you don't. For the last couple of decades, I didn't know my answer, and as a film critic, that always bothered me. It showed a lack of commitment and most troubling, a lack of identity. Oh, I struggle with this a lot. If I talk to someone with a deep knowledge of film, I would answer probably Brazil. If I, talk, if I talk to someone with a deep knowledge of film, I would probably say my favorite movie is The Godfather or Goodfellas. But if I'm like talking to my friends, I'm gonna be like super bad. <laughs> wow, cool article. I've come to realize my favorite film of all time is John Patrick Shanley's Joe vs. the Volcano. I'm obsessed with it and always will be. This is cool. I'm on another article, birthmoviesdeath.com, The Life Lessons of Joe vs. the Volcano by Scott Wampler. He says, it is one of the most criminally underrated films of my lifetime. Oh, cool. This gives reasons why Joe's near romances with the other women were not meant to be. Few sparks fly between Joe and each of these ladies, but romances fizzle. In Dee Dee's case, she turns down Joe's advances and his suggestion that she too should quit her job and come with Joe on the adventure because she hasn't found the same courage Joe has. Angelica, Joe turns down her offer for a one night stand, recognizing both her vulnerability and their pronounced lack of similarities. In the end, Joe falls for Patricia. The lesson, when we fall for people in the moment, we tend to ignore some very obvious red flags. We all need and want a human connection, but if you can see from the get-go that a relationship just wouldn't make sense, it might be wiser to hold out for someone who's more compatible, someone who will jump into a volcano with you. Oh yeah, wow. Um, John Patrick Shanley went on to direct Doubt, which is not this movie. Joe vs. Volcano with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks from the year 1990. I've now seen it. I absolutely love that movie. So let me know. Are you in the majority of people who think this is a flop or do you absolutely love this? Comment below. Let me know if you want to see my full length to this. Definitely hit the link in my description box below for Patreon information. And on that note, I'm going to go eat. What else would I do?